So were you in court yesterday, by the way? Yes, I was in court. Um, I beat late, but I was in court before the court uh, agenda matter. For, because the narration we got was that this whole thing was quite sudden in the sense that it was during the cross-examination of the third accused that when the AG rose to his feet to make a comment that the, the third accused then gave the outburst which the, the judge asked to be put on record. Did you catch that yeah. part or this happened before you went there? Yeah, this happened before I went there, but um, I have um, a detailed account of what happened. Just as you recounted, uh, the third accused was being cross-examined by lawyers for the third accused, Dr. Arthur Foster. And the substance of the cross-examination was about the um, basis upon which the Bank of Ghana is seeking payment for the ambulances. Um, counsel for the first accused uh, sought to suggest that um, even though the letter was written by the then Deputy Minister, Dr. Fulson, um it had the seal of the controller and accountant general, and that it was on the basis of the seal that the Bank of Ghana honored the request. So that was what counsel was soliciting um, from the third accused under court examination. Um, Mr. Dame, the AG, rose to object to an answer third accused gave because, according to him, the third accused appeared to be defending the third accused, Dr. Tosfosten. That uh, uh, banter was what led to the outburst, as you rightly pointed out. And he said in open court mm -hmm. uh, that it is the attorney general who has been calling him at odd hours, meeting him at odd hours, impressing on him, basically seeking to coerce him to falsify evidence against Arthur Forsen so that he is set free. And he says so under oath. And it is important that we, we, we emphasize that this is not uh, an allegation made on radio. This is testimony, evidence given under oath, which, if proven to be false, can make Mr. Richard Jackpa, that businessman, liable for the offense of perjury. Now, do we know? So no uh, yeah, do we know if the judge, after taking this on record, asked for evidence, or do we know the next date of no, hearing? It, it, he is giving evidence. So what Jackpa said is evidence in law. So when that matter, when he says so, there was some. Um, um, pandemonium or chaos in court, so the judge um, um, rose, retired into chambers with counsel, and had a session with them in chambers, came back and uh, admonished um, 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 counsel to apologize to the attorney general, and also admonished the media and all the parties to be circumspect about what had happened, because obviously it's a sensitive matter, and I can understand where my lady was coming from. But for us, as a political party, given the considerable public interest nature of this matter and the fact that the attorney general is a public officer he is also supposed to be a minister of justice and the leader of the bar he is subject to the code of ethics governing the legal profession the code of ethics governing prosecutors and other laws of this country we think that this is a big scandal we can be quiet about it and we are ready to explain the issue, support them with the necessary incontrovertible evidence mm. for the whole world to know. Yeah, but this, that's the point I was going to make with my, my next question, mm. that did the judge ask for evidence? Because as you said, it was in the course of giving evidence that the allegation was made. So now you must give evidence to prove the allegation within the no, broad No, the allegation term. is evidence. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When what, what, no, what I'm, what I'm saying is that, no, I understand that. I'm saying that, you see, yeah. you are giving evidence as a term of you are giving testimony as a term of art but if you mm -hmm. allege that somebody has done something the court can ask it, you it's to not an, an allegation again that's what i'm trying to tell you okay so, i mean the witness boss and fine. i've gone oh, and the cross is amazing yes. everything i'm telling yeah, you but yes but i understand that but i'm just saying yeah, that yeah. Uh -huh. the court can ask him to prove that that's my point no what the attorney general could have objected to that and moved for the court to strike it out the attorney general did not object. He did not deny. He did not apply to the court for it to be struck out, knowing that the judge has said on two occasions that it should be captured by the record. So he did not object. So if evidence is given that you think is, is malicious or it is, it is unfounded or it is irrelevant, 
you as a lawyer can ask the court to get it struck out and even get the witness to apologize. He didn't do it. So now it's yeah, but, but, but Sam, you know that there are different strategies because we don't know if the AG side has crossed examined Jack Pai yet. So maybe when they get to cross examination, they could then ask him to, or they could put that to strict proof. So, so I'm basically saying that the flow of the case, this is not necessarily conclusive. And I'm not necessarily saying I believe somebody or don't believe somebody. Just, well, just for the purpose is, of for, understanding for us, what as has happened. As, as far as the proceedings stand today, that evidence given by the third accused has not been controverted. It has not been disputed. It is part of the record. The AG has not disputed it. It has not been struck out. Now, what I want to clarify is this whole, you know, uh, introduction of plea bargain into this very serious conversation. Bernard, it is a total red herring, which we must not entertain at all. Now, number one, I'm happy you've clarified that Atul Fawcett has never made a plea bargain. The plea bargain they are circulating is basically a proposal for settlement from big seas. Big C's is a company that was contracted by the actual NDC Mahama government to supply the state with ambulances. Now, Big C's is not a party to the matter before the courts. They are not being prosecuted. Rather, it is their Ghanaian agent in that transaction called Richard Jackpa, who is being prosecuted. So Big C's wrote a letter to the AG through Richard Jackpa that, look, we are not parties to this matter. However, this matter can affect our reputation, given the fact that we don't have an opportunity to defend ourselves. And so we want to settle. You claim this transaction has occasioned you a financial loss of 2 million euros. We are ready to pay you the money so that you ship back to us the ambulances we supply to you. Now, under the Plea Bargain Act, this is without prejudice to the case of the third accused. It doesn't mean that he has accepted guilt. It doesn't mean that. He's saying that without prejudice, my counterparts abroad are willing to settle. The AG had 30 days to accept this proposal and bring same to the attention of the court, whereupon the court would have given the parties an adjournment to go and settle. The AG did not accept this offer. It is very instructive. He did not accept. The 30 days last, and the court said, we will now continue with the case, with the litigation. So that so-called plea bargain, which is being circulated in the media, is dead. It has expired. And therefore, if there is evidence that the Attorney General is having clandestine meetings with the third accused, in the absence of the lawyer for the third accused, impressing on him to falsify or fabricate evidence against Atul Fawcett, that plea bargain cannot be the excuse. I, mean, I hope you get my point. Because a plea bargain has expired. Yes. For which reason, the judge has decided to continue the adjudication of the case. And Gofredami knows, as a leader of the bar, that our work as lawyers is governed by ethics. Rule 13 of our ethics says that a lawyer cannot communicate with a represented party in the case directly. Bernard, if you go to court and you are represented by a lawyer, the only way another lawyer can communicate to you is through your lawyer. It is right. Because you are presumed not to know the law. And if a lawyer engages you, it means he's taking advantage of you. And that is why our ethics bar us from doing that. It is misconduct to engage a represented party without going to his lawyer. Again, our ethics, Rule 54 and 40, says that you can't tell a witness to falsify or give false testimony to a court. In fact, apart from it constituting you know, professional misconduct, it is also a crime per Section 213 and 214 of the Criminal and Other Offenses Act of Ghana, 1960, Act 29, if you make any person fabricate evidence to deceive a judge, which is what Godfrey Dami is All right. So, fair enough. And so, I'm, I'm happy that... I'm happy we've come to the meeting of minds on the point that Sky never said 
Atu forcing at asked for a plea bargain. He actually made a reference to Atu Asian, mm. the banker who has been jailed, who initially took up a plea bargain. So I'm sure there was some confusion in the communication to sure, you. Sure, sure. Second, second point, second point to, to you yeah. is, does the intention of the NDC to put the, and I put this in bracket, evidence out in the public domain, will that not compromise the case for your 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 leader and possibly be seen as attempting to influence the case from outside because all of this happened in open court once a political party takes the so-called evidence and puts it out that shapes the mind of the public about the case and is that not essentially violating the sub judicate issue what you well, lawyers you see, talk about the two are not mutually exclusive there is a public interest you know angle of the matter then there is a the legal aspect of the matter which is what is being heard in, uh, by the court. Now, um, we think that the, it is in the interest of the public for us to know what this attorney general has been up to, his modus operandi, which we've been talking about. And I mean, the evidence will shock you because it is not just about the attorney general. It is about higher ups in the judiciary. It is about close associates of the president. And when we put that evidence out, you will see the desperate length that some of these people go just to pervert the course of justice. And all the allegations we've been to making about judicial manipulations and all that, you will see the smoking gun to that. And so the public interest consideration in this matter, in my opinion, far outweigh even the legal consideration in this matter, which is just the interest of Atoforsen versus the Republic. This is very important. Look, we, we would need judicial reforms as a, as a result of this matter. Even reforms about how prosecution is done in this country. When you see the whole gamut of evidence we have, which will be putting out. So we don't think that it will in any, in any way prejudice or undermine the case of first accused. His lawyers have the right to bring an application for this trial. I know they will be studying that option and they exercise it. I cannot speak for them. But we, as a political party, we can't be quiet and say that because this matter is in court, having had this compelling evidence about it, the attorney general, he is our attorney general, he is supposed to be the minister of justice, the leader of our bar. And therefore, he is supposed to be, you know, a, 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 an ardent believer and follower of the rules that governs the legal protect profession, prosecutions in the country, and so on. We cannot be quiet about it because this matter is subjudicated. The evidence, obviously, will be put out. And we are daring right. Godfrey Yabu Adame. And this will be my last point, Bernard. We are daring him. We are saying, Atul Fossen has never met you anywhere, Godfrey Adame, to plead with you to drop the case against him. If he did, it will even be an offense. And as a responsible attorney general, you should have spoken about it then, and you should have taken him on then under the law. You didn't do that because he never did that. You are only raising this as a red herring to divert attention. If you have the evidence, Bernard Avila is waiting for you. Bring the evidence today. Don't wait. Bring it today. To prove to the world that Arto Forcing came to you to beg you to drop a case. Which in itself will not be wrong or lawful. But we are saying you have no such evidence. And we are daring you to bring the evidence if you claim you have it. Thank you for the intervention, uh, uh, Samijin. We appreciate that.